Fortunato and I both were members of very old and important Italian families. We used to play together when we were children. Fortunato was bigger, richer, and more handsome than I was, and he enjoyed making me look like a fool. He hurt my feelings a thousand times during the years of my childhood. I never showed my anger, however, so he thought we were good friends. But I promised myself that one day I would punish Fortunato for his insults to me. Many years passed. Fortunato married a rich and beautiful woman who gave him sons. Deep in my heart, I hated him, but I never said or did anything that showed him how I really felt. When I smiled at him, he thought it was because we were friends. He did not know it was the thought of his death that made me smile. Everyone in our town respected Fortunato. Some men were afraid of him because he was so rich and powerful. He had a weak spot, however. He thought he was an excellent judge of wine. I also was an expert on wine. I spent a lot of money buying rare and costly wines. I stored the wines in the dark rooms under my family's palace. Our palace was one of the oldest buildings in the town. The Montresor family had lived in it for hundreds of years. We had buried our dead in the rooms under the palace. These tombs were quiet, dark places that no one but myself ever visited. Late one evening, during carnival season, I happened to meet Fortunato on the street. He was going home alone from a party. Fortunato was beautiful in his silk suit, made of many colors, yellow, green, purple, and red. On his head he wore an orange cap, covered with little silver bells. I could see he had been drinking too much wine. He threw his arms around me. He said he was glad to see me. I said I was glad to see him, too, because I had a little problem. What is it? he asked, putting his large hand on my shoulder. My dear Fortunato, I said, I'm afraid I have been very stupid. The man who sells me wine said he had a rare barrel of Amontillado wine. I believed him, and I bought it from him. But now I'm not so sure that the wine is really Amontillado. What? he said. A cask of Amontillado at this time of year? An entire barrel? Impossible! Yes, I was very stupid. I paid the wine man the full price he wanted, without asking you to taste the wine first. But I couldn't find you, and I was afraid he would sell the cask of Amontillado to someone else. So I bought it. A cask of Amontillado, Fortunato repeated. I pretended I didn't hear his question. Instead, I told him I was going to visit our friend Lucrezzi. 
He will be able to tell me if the wine is really Amontillado, I said. Fortunato laughed in my face. Lucrezia cannot tell Amontillado from vinegar. I smiled to myself and said, But some people say that he is as good a judge of wine as you are. Fortunato grabbed my arm. Take me to it, he said. I'll taste the Amontillado for you. But, my friend, I protested, it is late. The wine is in my wine cellar, underneath the palace. Those rooms are very damp and cold, and the walls drip with water. I don't care, he said. I am the only person who can tell you if your wine man has cheated you. Lucrezia cannot. Fortunato turned, and still holding me by the arm, pulled me down the street to my home. The building was empty. My servants were enjoying carnival. It's nothing, he said. But he couldn't stop coughing. Come, I said firmly. We will go back upstairs. Your health is important. You are rich, respected, admired, and loved. You have a wife and children. Many people would miss you if you die. We will go back before you get seriously ill. I can go to Lucrezi for help with the wine. No, he cried. This <coughs> cough is nothing. It will not kill me. I won't die <coughs> from a cough. Uh, that is true, I said. But you must be careful. He took my arm, and we began to walk through the cold, dark rooms. We went deeper and deeper into the cellar. Finally, we arrived in a small room. Bones were pushed high against one wall. A doorway in another wall opened to an even smaller room, about one meter wide and two meters high. Its walls were solid rock. Here we are, I said. I hid the cask of Amontillado in there. I pointed to the smaller room. Fortunato lifted his candle and stepped into the tiny room. I immediately followed him. He stood stupidly staring at two iron handcuffs chained to a wall of the tiny room. I grabbed his arms and locked them into the metal handcuffs. It took only a moment. He was too surprised to fight me. I stepped outside the small room. "'Where is the Amadiado? he cried. Ah, yes, I said, the cask of Amontillado. I leaned over and began pushing aside the pile of bones against the wall. Under the bones was a basket of stone blocks, some cement, and a small shovel. Then there was a long silence. I finished the second and third rows of stone blocks. As I began the fourth row, I heard Fortunato begin to shake the chains that held him to the wall. He was trying to pull them out of the granite wall. Still no answer. I hurried to put the last stone into the wall and put the cement around it. Then I pushed the pile of bones in front of the new wall I had built. That was fifty years ago. 
For half a century now, no one has touched those bones. May he rest in peace. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel to see the latest videos. Thank you.